Welcome back. Here we go. And we're starting in a standing pose. Uh, we will find our way back down to pigeon on the other side. I wanted to talk a little bit about anatomy and posture and stacking your, your posture appropriately in any pose, but particularly when you're standing, well, standing, sitting, laying, or whatever. But it just makes you more alive in your skin and helps break uh, old patterns that may not be so positive for you. One thing that you'll notice is, I mean, notice how you stand. And I like the little heel scoop because it activates my arches. But do you tend to lean forward and stretch out your, your hip flexors and your psoas? So I'm hyperextending here. Uh, and this is a very common way for people to stand. You see, uh, you know, models and things standing like this. So this is constricting my lower back and causing problems there and it's really creating some tension in the front body. So if I just gently push my hips over my knees, ah, oh, what a relief, push my hips over my knees. So I'm gonna look down so I can see most of my foot. So I wanna stack things. I want my knees to be over my ankles. I don't want them hyperextended. So they can be a little soft, but they can be strong. I want my hips over my knees. I want my hips, which are never <laughs> in alignment, one of my issues, underneath my shoulders, somewhat underneath my ears. So I'm finding this axis of my body. I want it balanced. And, and just keep checking in with your posture. It takes work to, to align things and to feel good. So if I'm here and I'm coming back, oftentimes my torso will feel like it's at this angle. Well, it slightly is. But then by putting on my core and lifting, I can find that ease. And I have the normal lordotic curve here, kyphotic curve here, lordotic curve here. So just stack in your body. We used the wall once, we can do it again to practice on how to open the backs of the knees. But there is a tendency for people to open and lock them and that's not good. So just activate the muscles around the bones. Find yourself in your skin. I like my hands anatomical. And there you go. So we're gonna lift up into Hastasana. We're gonna float down. You can soften your knees into Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Be playful here. You can even bend and stretch a few times. This is the beginning move for a Patasana chair pose. It can be your Uttanasana if you need it to be. But four points of the feet. I'm reaching down through the big and baby toe mounds, inner and outer heel. So I'm really stabilizing my lower torso. So, try to have the weight over the ankles. Find your Uttanasana. We're going to walk the hands out and step back into an easy way to get into down dog. And we're going to be a little playful here and stretching open and close. You can do one leg at a time. Your heels don't have to come to the ground. Ugh. And again, my wrists are always an issue, so bring that belly button up and in. And flow down through the armpits. Beautiful. I'm going to come up on my toes, roll forward into a plank position. Just for a couple minutes, breathe, bellies up and in, reaching through the heels, reaching through the crown. Uh, armpits are activated, scapulas down the back. Drop the knees. Come into a gentle rest in child's pose. Breathe, let go. Child's pose doesn't work for you, you can do puppy pose. This opens the armpits nicely. Arms about shoulder width apart. You 
can roll through here to come into Cobra. Arms are underneath the armpit, hands are underneath the armpits, forehead on the earth, roll the heels together, engage the buttocks. See how this already lifting me up? And then just float up and down. Up and down. Adjust so you're comfortable. Up and down. And take a break. A nice exercise for the spine, resiliency for the spine. We're going to push up and back through the child's pose or folded leaf, tabletop, and then come into a little cat cow. You can do cat cow. You can do any of these poses in a chair, standing or on the mat. There are ways to create variations. So that's loosening things up, creating that rocking motion. You can also practice plank pose for strength, and we need to create strength. I use TheraBands a lot too in classes. So if this is a better plank pose for you, this is a great plank pose. Why not do both of them? Trying to get those elbows under the shoulders. My armpits are engaged. I'm trying to engage the scapulas along the back body. Excellent. And release. And roll to a uh, hero pose. Hmm. That felt pretty good. So a little cat cow here. Just letting things loosen up. Little twist to the cat cow. And then we're going to move into the other side for pigeon. We came through rocking force before. Actually, we came through Matsyandrasana, uh, the sage pose. And then from there, we went into rocking horse. So we'll just demonstrate the opposite side so you can remember what we did and make this work for you. So a little gentle rocking. Yes. One variation of rocking horse is called dolphin. And this is a different dolphin. A few of these poses have the same names, just like common names for flowers. That's why if you really want to know it, learn the Latin. If you really want to know it, learn the Sanskrit name. If not, have fun with it. <laughs> so I'm lifting, and I'm scooping down and coming up. Rolling the spine, so I'm getting that cat-cow type of action. But it's a little more fluid motion. You can pretend you're a seahorse or dolphin. It's your favorite beach. That's kind of nice. And lift. And then come down the opposite direction. I can't remember which direction I went before. So down and roll up. Or you can roll down and come up. It's fun. And, you know, we can be playful even though we're over 50. I'm not going to ask how old you are, Shelby, but you can be playful even at whatever age you are at as well. We forget that there's a lot of play still left in us. So from here, we're going to roll around. Oops. <laughs> I rolled around. I can't remember which way I did pigeon before. I did it that way. So we're going to roll this knee up and come down into this pigeon. Ah, and again, we have full pigeon. And you're lifting out of the spine. You're not constricting the lumbar spine. Ekapataraja. Lift, exhale, fold forward. It's great to have props. It's great to be comfortable. Why not take those glasses off? And breathe. Let go. Use a bolster. 
Use three of her folded blankets. If you need to start on your hip, that's just fine. If you need to roll so it's the perineal floor that's reaching into the earth, start here for a few breaths and then give it a break. Why not explore as long as you're doing it safely? You can move through any of these awesome. This is a big uh, piriformis stretch. External rotators. Hands under armpits, come up. And I'm going to just roll it. Oh, I'm going to come through here into a uh, plank, because it's an easy way to get into plank. And, and this is strengthening. I need it. I want to get stronger and more flexible and more amazing as I get older. Then I'm going to slide the leg back in. And I know we have to have a slightly shorter session this go round. But I'm going to roll into a lovely pose from here called Starfish Pose. And I'm going to just roll onto my hip. I'm going to uncurl, unfurl. I'm going to take up as much room as I want. It's like having a king size bed. With nobody else in. Ah. So take up space. You're only on the planet for a given amount of time. Take up space. But be productive. So here's my hara, my dante, and my core. So I'm going to open that lumbar spine a little bit. Swoosh away all the wrinkles in my yoga pants. Stretch one out. The opposite arm, opposite leg, opposite arm. Very simple stretches here. I'm going to reach through my left leg and right arm. Oh, and relax. Notice the energy moving around, the difference in feeling. Reach through my right heel and left arm and relax. Maybe I'll even do some ujjayi breath here. You can do legs up the wall without a wall. They're prana karate. This is an ah pose. Ah. You can jiggle, wiggle, point and flex. You can even draw the legs down. Get a nice psoas stretch here. Open them. It's hard to stretch the psoas. It's hard to stretch the hip flexors. Ah. and come to quiet for a few minutes. Can you come out a 
Shavasana and try to have your Shavasana be, oh, if you can have it be 7 to 10, 15 minutes, yay. If you can only have it be 5 minutes, that's better than none. But I'm coming out gently, rolling to my side, my head is the last thing that comes up. That was lovely. I enjoyed that. I don't know where we are with our timing, Shelby. We're at about 15 now. Oh, okay. If you gave me my five minute cue, I didn't hear you. So, namaste. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Shelby, for assisting with this and making it possible. And thanks to the Athens County Library.